Okay, I think we've got one more um, presentation just before we go through. I think, is it lunch after this? So you're all looking at me saying, please hurry up because stomachs are rumbling. So um, I must apologise, first of all. In the notes, you'll see that um, we're expecting Jim Ty from West London NHS today. Um, Jim is um, not very well at all. I spoke to him yesterday. Um, and as a result, um, we are going to speak to you today about Cala body cameras. Um, Jim was going to be talking to you about a body camera pilot that they've been doing at West London Mental Health. So rather than just focus on the West London pilot that we've done, just going to talk to you a little bit more generically about body cameras and our experience within the NHS to date, OK? Hopefully that's OK with you guys. Um, just a little bit of history. Um, Cala was formed on the back of a company called Reveal Media. Reveal Media, for the last 10 years, have been providing body cameras that you can see in the image there to police and prisons, um, parking companies, and also security companies. And it was in the engagement of talking to security companies and parking companies that we got involved with the NHS and started to provide cameras for uh, parking attendants and security guys at NHS trusts. And taking it on a stage further, it was again engaging with those people and talking about the possibility of using body cameras inside the hospital in a ward environment. The feedback we got going back probably more than 24 months now was that the reveal body camera that we use in security is too big, uh, it's too imposing, very aggressive looking, um, and its real uh, sort of design is to capture evidence. And that wasn't necessarily what we needed inside the hospital environment. What we wanted was something a little bit more easy on the eye, a lot smaller, less intrusive, and something that people can have confidence in and just feel a lot safer. So it was about safety of staff and patients rather than necessarily evidence capture, which is what it was with Reveal and with the, with the police forces. So Cala was born. Um, the technology that Cala uses in the cameras is the same technology that Reveal have been using for the last 10 years. Um, it's worked really well with police forces around the world, including um, in New York now. We've also got um, police forces in New York and the New York Penitentiary Service as well. Um, so it's, um, we've been providing body um, cameras now for the last 12 years, and the evidence management software uh, is the same that we use with the police force that we now use with Cala. So we've been around for a long time and we feel that we've got a very good insight into how body cameras can positively influence situations. Nurses love what they do generally. Um, I know that we've got not necessarily just nurses here today, but um, obviously Jim's speech was much more about the um, NHS and nurses using it there at uh, West London. And what we took on board was that nurses generally enjoy what they do and they want to have good days. They want to go home at the end of the day having helped people enjoy what they do. They want less of those antagonistic situations or situations where they find themselves, um, you know, uh, there's disruption and there's um, incidents which just prevents them really from getting on doing what they enjoy the most. So we want to have fewer tough days, more good ones. And why use body cameras? Um, it's been shown that they can certainly de-escalate situations. We have the front-facing screen on our body camera, as you can see there, which means the person that you are filming can see themselves in the front-facing screen, and that generally modifies behaviour. It tends to calm them down a lot. I'm not saying that's 100% going to work every time, but in a lot of situations, it does help to modify. People don't want to see themselves acting like idiots on film, so it generally reduces disruption. Taking that stage further, it should keep the patient and the staff member a lot safer. Um, really important, it records an independent account of what happened. I don't know how many of you have ever been in a situation where you are explaining what happened and somebody says that didn't happen and somebody says this did and da-da-da-da-da, it goes backwards and forwards. When you've got the incident recorded on the body camera, there's no more of those situations where he said, she said, or this happened, or this was done. You've got a 100% accurate account of what actually happened. And something we didn't think about initially was that the um, footage can now be used for training and learning purposes. And this has come about um, feedback from both Northamptonshire NHS and West London NHS. They've played back some videos to the staff member to say, look at how you dealt with the situation. Are you happy with that? Do you think you could have dealt with it differently? And they've been using it to actually improve um, sort of uh, techniques uh, in, in terms of um, you know, training and learning. 
We're not saying body cameras can replace the behavioural management techniques. I mean, many of you will have conflict management and kind of lone worker and that kind of sort of training. Body cameras can't replace that, but we do feel that they can certainly enhance and have a positive effect on de-escalating some of the tense situations you might find yourself in. Next couple of slides, just a little bit of info about what we've done um, with a couple of NHS trusts. So we've worked really closely over the last 18 to 24 months with Northamptonshire uh, NHS. And we've also, over the last 12 months, worked closely with Jim, who was meant to be here today, with West London NHS. So we first started with a feasibility study in uh, Q3 2017, and we put six cameras into um, Northampton. We did a pre-pilot survey where, th these are available by the way, either via myself and my colleague James, or I think they're on the Northampton website as well. It just shows a little bit of skeptical sort of feedback, staff and patients weren't really sure how it would be taken. They went ahead anyway. OK, and after about six months, it was decided that the one camera on each ward wasn't enough because if there was an incident, you had a staff member rushing to get the camera or trying to contact the colleague who had the camera. And by the time um, they were actually arriving at the scene, as it were, um, half the incident had been missed. So this is where we expanded it to two and in some cases three cameras per ward. And this enabled them to capture more of each event and it enabled the staff to actually review to see how they could improve care um, given to the patients as well, because you got more of the um, incident from nearer the start of it. Uh, about three or four months ago, we did a one year on survey with Northampton NHS and the feedback was really, really positive. So some of the staff that were interviewed were the same as that were interviewed before we started the um, trial. And in pretty much every case, the staff member was saying it's a, it's a great product, it's really helped, it's helped to de-escalate, it's helped to modify behaviour. Exactly what we thought from the feasibility study would, would happen. On the back of this, Northampton NHS have been awarded the HSJ Patient Safety Award for the use of body cameras in the trust. And uh, not only due to body cameras, but partly due, they also were awarded the NHS uh, Trust of the Year in uh, 2018 for their use of sort of modern technology um, in the hospital. <laughs> A couple of comments there um, from uh, Northampton and the PMVA manager saying that the use of the footage from the body camera has got enormous potential to help prevent incidents and improve how they respond. Um, medical director saying that they've had a very positive experience and a positive outcome for patients, and the patients even say so themselves. And a staff nurse has said that she can see nothing but positives from it with recourse to its potential in uh, reducing potentially violent incidents. So really good feedback from the people that were involved in the project from the start. And again, just one more slide here on the uh, West London um, trial. It's a slightly bigger one. We put 50 cameras into West London for a six-month pilot project which started about halfway through last year. They were using it across seven mental health wards which ranged from voluntary admissions to medium secure. Some of the cameras were pulled um, and training was provided for security nurses, nurses in charge and response nurses. Again, the staff and patient feedback, very, very positive. Um, and in Q1, so just recently, they've identified the need for the first 50 cameras on a permanent contract there. So um, that really did prove the concept worked for, for West London. They're also um, worked closely with us and we're gonna have an academic study published, which um, the latest update I had was that it should be ready by the end of this month. So we're really looking forward to that coming out as well. Um, I'm going to quickly skip through these guys because I know you're hungry. This is basically telling you how the camera works and how you would perhaps turn it on and announce the fact that a situation is occurring and that you want to turn the body camera on. It's not meant to be a covert solution. It's meant to be an out in the open, honest solution that people can see what's happening. So it's not I'm filming you or recording you without you knowing about it, which perhaps some devices do exist out there that can do that. Um, so this is very much an open and honest way of doing it. The nurse would make it clear that you're recording, continue to deal with the situation, and then you would upload the footage to the government secure cloud account. We use Microsoft Azure. An important video is deleted after 31 days automatically. It would only be kept if you know it to be an important video that you want to keep, and you can rename it and make it easier to find later on. And this video should help to resolve situations quicker so nurses can get back to doing what they do best. 
Uh, mounting options, uh, we have the lanyard up on the top there, which I believe James down the front is wearing, and we're out the front if you want to come and speak to us after this. Um, we have the crocodile clip option, which is being used in the middle, which is the way I'm wearing this one here. And we've also got a magnet option, which makes it a little bit more kind of, you can wear it where you like on the upper half of your body. Um, there's also a harness that we're developing because in the mental health environment, working with Northampton, they had a couple of incidents where the um, patient was trying to grab hold of the camera and it was coming off of the magnetic um, connection. So they've asked us to do some kind of a harness which we put together, which has got like a similar mounting plate on the shoulder, like you saw in the first picture of the police officer, his camera was mounted on the shoulder there. So the harness is going to be something similar to that. Very easy to use, it's a one button activation. You can record two to three hours of footage and the camera will fully charge in two hours. So. So far, we haven't found the need to have any more than a two-hour footage from any kind of a shift from, um, you know, uh, a nurse. It's generally been 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there, 20 minutes here. So you're not generally filling up the um, camera in, in a shift. As I've mentioned, front-facing screen lets people see what's going on, and it means that you're being open and honest. There's no sort of uh, hiding it. Once you've recorded your video, connect it to your PC, it'll upload to your Calor account. Uh, it takes around seven minutes to upload an hour of footage. The battery will also start charging when you plug it in and the memory will be wiped so the camera is ready to be used again. And we can also provide a six port docking station to enable multiple cameras, which is what we put into the um, wards at Northampton and at uh, West London as well. So it's a secure account, um, as I mentioned, 30 days, then videos will be deleted uh, unless you put a, a longer retention policy on them. You can add notes to make it easier to find them and you can share videos externally with the police. So we have a button on the platform which enables you to share externally. Uh, it creates an email with a secure link that will go to the police email address that you need to email it to. And that will be valid for them to view that um, for 24 hours and then it will no longer be valid. So it's a really secure system. And West London sh have been sharing an awful lot of um, uh, footage with police recently as well. They're really getting good use out of that. Um, you can also give permission for colleagues to view footage. So if a colleague needs to view it but they don't have permission, you can create a link again, send it to your colleague via email. Government grade encryption, so the footage cannot be accessed, deleted or edited from the camera. Really good in case it got stolen or lost, it means nobody can view the video, your data is secure, the integrity is intact. The software program used by the police, access only given to authorised members of staff, unimportant footage after 31 days, we've been through that guys. This is the last couple of slides, and this is about how we've run a successful body camera pilot, things that you need to take into account. Um, first of all, the benefits quickly, just review those. Better understanding of the incident. You can assist staff training when reviewing footage. Hopefully a reduction of complaints because staff have got increased confidence and increased efficiency, overall reducing costs. Uh, the increased confidence will offer, because it offers transparency and it shows um, an increasing um, in professionalism. A reduction of violent and aggressive, uh, aggressive cases, uh, again, reducing costs. And also, um, Jim will vouch for this, he's uh, seen a reduction in the need for medical restraint by using the body camera as well, which is something that they're really, really pleased about. <coughs> again, just things to think about. If you want to put a body camera pilot into, uh, in, into an organisation like an NHS trust, is you need to think about the governance and the policy regarding the use of the cameras. Uh, you need to identify the users of the cameras for that trial period. Uh, you need to decide what you want to achieve from the trial as well. What are the objectives? It's definitely different from a mental health and acute trust and um, from a community trust. De definitely different objectives from, from the trial. And of course, from my point of view, make sure you've got the budget agreed. Uh, also, identify the right people. So you need a strategic lead, so the person that will have access internally to all of the key decision makers. A tactical lead, which would be a user of the system. That tactical lead could also be, potentially be a training champion that could do some internal training on how to use it. And really important, an IT lead, somebody who will know by having our system in, um, in, in, in house, will that provide, uh, will that kick up any issues in terms of IT? Will there be any restrictions, any firewalls, any proxy servers that are kind of get in the way of it working properly? Definitely get IT involved early. A governance lead, a project manager, and a training champion. These are the things that you need to think about. 
I think this is our last slide. Uh, a color body camera pilot is a great way to test the feasibility, acceptance, and effectiveness of body worn cameras. We offer a six, 12, or 24 camera pilot, which will come with a one, which will come with one, two, or four docking stations, depending on how many you need. And we will assist you with a pre-pilot survey of staff and patients and a post-pilot survey of staff and patients as well. So you get really good feedback from the same people that were asked about it beforehand and afterwards. You'll get assistance from Cala and our partner trusts as well in terms of governance, policy and awareness. We're going to share with you the governance and SOPs that Northampton put together. We're not saying they're perfect, but what we're saying is rather than kind of reinventing the wheel, have a look at what they've already done and see what's relevant to your trust. And we can help with the communications as well, the posters and the content that will go out to the locations where the body cameras will be used. So the hospital wards, at least a month in advance, let people know body cameras will be used in, you know, on this ward. It's because of, you know, safer for patients, safer for staff. And uh, just finally, myself and James uh, will be available in the refreshment area to talk to us further if you have any, any further questions. Um, and some contact details at the end here as well. Um, these, I, I can make these links available for you. The first one is the um, Northampton NHS website that I mentioned, which has got the governance and the SOPs and the communications that went out. Um, we can share those with you. And also there's an article there in Nursing Times from a few weeks ago which suggested that NHS England are going to be making uh, up to about £8 million in funding available for NHS trusts to pilot um, body cameras in, in hospitals. So hopefully that's um, going to make it easier for you guys to get funding for it. So that's me done. Uh, thank you for your time.